Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the primary reason why half of all American engineering students don't even make it to graduation. It might not be what you think, and we're going to talk about what you can do about it. Let's go. So for the past several years, the engineering graduation rate in the United States has hovered around the 50% mark. So for every 100 students that enroll in engineering, only 50 of them actually make it to graduation. Why do you think that is? Well, there has been dozens of studies done on this exact topic, and a few years ago, a group of researchers out of Iowa State decided to combine all of that information into a large meta-analysis. So a meta-analysis is where you combine a lot of existing smaller studies into one large data set, where you look for trends and other useful information. So the researchers at Iowa State combined over 50 studies into one large data set. And after sifting through all the information, they noticed there were 21 different driving factors that contributed to engineering attrition. Then they basically ranked each factor with how much evidence there was supporting it. And when you start to look over this list, there are some obvious heavy hitters, and that's what I wanna focus on in this video. Specifically this one, high school preparation. Out of all 21 different factors and all 50 studies that they combined, high school preparation has the most evidence supporting it. So to put it frankly, the American public school system is not adequately preparing students for the college engineering curriculum. Not even close. I hope you joined the video so far. If you are, make sure you hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And if you're currently studying engineering, or if you're you know, looking into studying engineering, I highly recommend checking out my book. You know, I wrote this book to really address this huge gap in expectations and demand that exists between high school and college, what I'm talking about in this video. This is my attempt at filling that gap, at better preparing kids for what college is going to expect of them, right? You know, self-discipline, sustainable lifestyle, motivation, right? Time management, studying performance, exam performance, it's all in here. It's getting a ton of great reviews, and I'm actually really excited to announce that Auburn, the University of Auburn, actually just licensed this book to use in their first year engineering curriculum. So. Don't take my word for it. There's universities across the US that are starting to use this book in their curriculum. It's available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. I'll put links in the description for everything. Thanks for your support, and back to the video. And this may be a bit surprising, right? Because when you start to research this stuff, you know, the United States uh, education system consistently comes up at the top of the list when you compare it to the rest of the world. But when you dive a little bit deeper and you start to look at specific topics like math and science, which are basically the mother and father of engineering, the United States falls way behind the rest of the world. According to the latest assessment from the Program for International Student Assessment, which tests the average level of education in math, reading, and science for 15-year-olds around the world, the United States ranks 16th in science and 35th in math. 35th! That's below average when you compare it to the rest of the world. That's pretty embarrassing if you ask me. Aren't we supposed to be some kind of influence? So in 2022, on this assessment, the average score in math worldwide was 472, and the United States scored 465. That's below average. That's a C minus. I don't know about you guys, but when I learned this, I was embarrassed for my country. And if you're wondering, the top five scoring countries on this math assessment are Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, China, and Singapore. All Asian countries. We're gonna talk more about this in a second. So we rank 16th in science and 35th in math. Maybe you're thinking, what's the big deal, right? Well, let me show you what tends to happen as a result of this. This chart represents the typical trajectory of a student in the American public school system. The x-axis is years, or you know, grades of school, and the y-axis is the relative demand or difficulty of math and science as the student progresses through school. So as you can see, as you learn more, you know the difficulty and demand of the material jumps up a little bit every year. Nothing new here, makes total sense. Okay, so, but what happens when this little yearly increase is not enough, right? Not enough to create a nice smooth transition into the college curriculum. Well, then you get a situation that looks like this. A huge jump in difficulty and demand between your last year of high school and your first year of college. And then you compare that to what it should look like, right? A nice smooth transition between high school and college, which is what other countries experience. You know, it's no wonder 
when you compare these two graphs, uh, that high school preparation is one of the factors with the most evidence supporting why engineers don't make it all the way through school. I mean, I got the idea for this video from all the comments that I get from students from other countries that talk about how much more they learn in school than we do, right, before college. So it's no wonder that when they come here for college, that they're way ahead of the game and they're able to adapt and able to succeed at a much higher rate than American students. And this totally mirrors what I experienced while I was in school. All the kids that were from other countries, or at least most of the kids that were foreign exchange students in my class in engineering, were all killing it, right? Way, you know, at the top of the curve, acing tests, way better than all the other students that came from the American public school system. If you're in school right now, if you're in, you know, college engineering, what's your experience like? Are you seeing the same thing where you know, the foreign uh, kids from out of the country, are they doing a lot better than the American students? I'm willing to bet that they are. So this huge jump in demand between high school and college will leave even the highest performing high school student very ill-equipped and out of place. Think about it this way. It's like starting a video game that you've hardly ever played on the final hardest level. Super hard very uncomfortable. And I can totally relate to this, right? This is exactly what happened to me when I went to school. I was not prepared at all for the higher level of material or the amount of work it required. And it took many failed exams and failed courses before I eventually caught up and filled that huge gap that the American public school system creates for all of us engineering students. And you know, now that I think about it, this huge jump in demand and difficulty between high school and college is probably a huge contributor to a lot of the other you know, top scoring factors on that study that we referenced at the beginning of the video. Factors like low grades, conceptual understanding, and inadequate teaching, right? Those three factors scored really high in that study. And I think if high school preparation was better, those three things would also be a lot better. Basically what I'm trying to say is our, you know, the American public school system just needs to have, I think, higher demands, right? It needs to expect more out of the kids. If it had that, if it expected more, if it, you know, placed a little bit more accountability on its students, then I think there wouldn't be such a high gap and there, we would have a lot higher graduation rate with engineering and some of these other STEM degrees. So what can you do, right? What if you are in high school right now or maybe you're a parent and your kid is interested in engineering and they're, they're looking at colleges, what can you do to better prepare? Well, the first thing is you're already doing it, right? You're watching this video. So you're educating yourself on this huge gap that I'm talking about, right? So if, you, you're, if you're educated to what's coming, if you know what's gonna happen when you make that transition from high school to college, then you'll be a lot, lot better mentally prepared for what's gonna happen, what to expect, right? You know, because when students expect kind of more of the same and a nice easy, you know, transition like they've had every year prior, then it tends to really smack their ego and confidence and it's a little bit harder to recover from. But when you have, you know, an appropriate expectation of what's coming, you can better prepare mentally, right? You can better prepare kind of your defenses and really gear up for what you're getting into. The next thing is you should really take full accountability for your own math and science education. So you just wanna recognize, right, that if you're, in, if you're currently in the American public school system, that you're probably gonna be able to get by with a minimal amount of effort, right? Just by memorizing equations and regurgitating information. So while good grades are great and should really always be pursued, you shouldn't always equate good grades with being well prepared. So one of the most, I think, useful things you can do with your time is to read your textbooks, right? understand the material and equations at a fundamental level. Learn why they're useful, not just how to solve them. You know, don't just memorize stuff to get by, right? Go beyond what your teacher's asking and really learn the material inside and out. And another thing that I think every uh, high school engineering, you know, prospective student should be spending their time on is learning Microsoft Excel and some basic coding because learning how to manipulate and kind of analyze large amounts of data is a massive part of any college engineering curriculum. So the next thing that you can really be spending your time on is cultivating your own self-discipline. You know, any college engineering curriculum is gonna require a ton of time and energy and focus in order for you to be successful. And the only way you're gonna be able to dedicate those things is if you're a very disciplined person. And the best thing about self-discipline is that it's transferable, right? So once you cultivate self-discipline through academics or sports or fitness or music, 
you can then you know, deploy your self-discipline to accomplish anything you want. So pick something, right? Pick something you wanna get good at or something you wanna accomplish and commit to it because that's what self-discipline is. It's all about commitment, right? Showing up every day with the priority to accomplish what you wanna accomplish. Even on the days you don't wanna show up, even on the days that you don't really have any motivation, you show up anyway and you work on it because that's what self-discipline is, right? It's, it's setting you know, what you wanna accomplish at a higher level than how you feel that day. That is self-discipline. Then once you show up to college and you're gonna study something like engineering or some other STEM degree, you will be so much better prepared to handle everything that it requires, right? Because you will already be disciplined, you will already be accustomed to diving into that big workload. And you know, this one is so important, it's so crucial that I'll probably make a full video uh, just on how you can develop your own self-discipline. So stay tuned for that one. And the last thing I recommend is try not to take your summers completely off, right? Now that you know what awaits you before college starts, it's probably smart to maximize the amount of time you have before you graduate, which is why I think it's a really good idea to you know, use your summer breaks wisely, right? Don't just go home and veg out on the couch. Use that time to better prepare, right? Fill that gap that's coming between you know, high school and college. Learn how to code, learn how to do Excel, you know, find something that you can uh, you know, cultivate your discipline through. Uh, just don't waste that time. And do you remember those five countries that were the highest performers in math? Well, they don't take summer breaks, or if they do, they're a lot less time than the United States. So the last thing you should be doing is going home and becoming a couch potato. There you have it. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments below, right? If, you, if you're in college right now, right? If you're in engineering, I'd love to hear about kind of what your experience was like uh, going from high school to college, especially if you were in the American public school system, what was it like? Or maybe if you're from another country, um, what was it like going to an American college? You know, I'd love to hear you guys' experiences in the comments below. But that's it for now. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.